Today's project is to convert what is currently my 11 row corn head. As you can see, we're missing a row unit right here. I actually have the snout right there down on the ground. Convert what is right now an 11 row corn head back to our 12 row chopping folding corn head. This bracket here, it had a little bit of a hairline crack that looked like it could get pretty beefy if we ran it another season. So they did a little bit of welding here around where the bolt's gonna sit. And this bracket is pretty much the whole piece that needs to sit over our stock rolls. So these are the stock rolls. These are the cutting knives that take the actual stock and chop them down. You can see, here's another roll. This one we haven't touched, it's fully assembled yet. There's that bracket right there that we had to take off. And we also have many other things off, like the gathering chains. We also had to unhook the deck plates. So we have all those parts over all, all over on the floor. It's gonna be quite a project to get it put back together, but I'm pretty confident that because we have the other end to go off of, when dad gets here, we should be able to figure this out. It's been like two weeks since we took this thing all apart. So we're not for sure how everything's gonna go back together. A lot of bolts and pieces down there on the floor. But with a little time and determination, I'm sure we'll figure it out. Oh, that's heavier than I remembered. Now that we have this bracket in, I gotta find the two bolts that are gonna go back here. I was kinda of basing it off the two that they have over here. Not for sure which ones they are. We'll come over here and see if we can find two bolts that are by themselves. I'm gonna guess these two. Put these bolts back in here. Next is this little plate on the back side here. Just gotta tighten these bolts down. Now there's this, whoa, where'd you put the curtain actually? There's this little piece that holds the curtain. You want the divider? Yeah. That way the trash stays within one row. You gotta put this on, get it all attached down. So far things have seemed to be going well. We put everything together the first time. Tough to say if we might have to do it again a second time. Got the head all the way up, locked into position, putting some bolts on, on the underneath side that we realized we forgot to put in for this plate. Keep going. Where are those that, bolts? This bolt looks a lot lighter than the one we got over there. Yeah, we're just basing things off of what we're seeing off the other side. We took off a lot of bolts to know where they're all supposed to go. Found two bolts, look like they should work, so I'm putting them on onto the gear case. That's what this is right here that I'm attaching them to. That's what spins the knives. Put these bolts in too tight already on the side that the bolts underneath, the holes aren't lining up. So now we gotta retake these ones off, take a little pressure off to wiggle it around underneath. <clears throat> oh no, not there. Oh no. With these bolts tightened in, now it should be for the second time. Ready to tighten these ones off to the side and back up. <clears throat> the next thing we're putting on, a little crop diverter. Separates it from row to row so all the trash stays just under the one row. Why don't you sit? It's right here. I was wrong. It's not the... Whoa. It's not the apron we need to put on. There's this little metal piece little that holds the stock rolls. Or guides the outside of the oh, stock rolls that, that we got to put on. That one in the middle. While we were putting this shield back on in front of this stock roll, we were remembering that there's a specific measurement that this gap needs to be between this shield and the cutting knife of one of the rolls. So we just copied exactly, put the bolt exactly where it was rusted and a little bit of paint was worn. So we know that this measurement's the same. But we forgot to do that on this side. So now I'm gonna pop this thing all back off. We're gonna double check because it looks like our measurement over here is not anywhere close based off the other side. By the looks of it, we have too much of a gap here on this one, and it looks like the bolt was just slid over a little bit more on this plate. But I wanna be sure we get this thing put back together the right way. So we're gonna double check here in the operator's manual for the corn head, just so we have everything set, so we know that's not gonna be a problem. Where could it be? Here it says, 
adjusting trash knives maximum gap 1 16th and by no stretch would I say that these other rows are 1 16th as we're now starting to check them all to see what they're kind of set to things are coming together here on this row unit we're putting back together now we're putting back on the deck plates what these do is they can adjust in and out so we can adjust the gap in between this one and this one and the basic purpose of the deck plates is this we want as tight so the ears do not slide through so we got to start bolting this down eventually we get it looking like this when we get all the chains and everything put back on now put on our little sprocket here that we use for the gathering chains now comes the hard part of putting the gathering chains back on there's also a specification between the measurements that these need to be at we mark those on the deck plates here so we're trying to make sure those are all going to line up again but it's been a struggle bus to figure that out because we didn't mark which side was the left and which was right on the ground so we're trying both for starters oh, okay. now there's a particular spacing that needs to happen between these gathering chains for the timing mechanism to all be correct and i put little marks or little white dashes on them but just to be sure, we're gonna check in the book to see how it's get saying these need to be timed. Let's see. So based off what I can find in the book, it's showing, you can see these ones just have two chain links. Here there's just two chain links. The rest of the chain has three chain links. So contrary to the way Dad's moving the chain right now, what we need is we need the two chain links and this little piece right here, which they labeled C in the book, to line up with this little divot and then we'll put our two chain link, two chain link, and we'll do the same thing on the other side, and then they'll be matched up. Looks like I got them all set how they should be or how they want them in the book. I guess we didn't check the rest of the corn head of all the timing, assuming it was all right from the factory, which maybe that's a bad decision or a bad assumption to make. But because this is the first roll I've ever had to take apart, ever had to set something like this, it was interesting to learn. Definitely something I'll be looking at more in season if we ever have problems with the roll. But now we gotta set the tensioner because that belt's gotta be nice and tight on there to start dragging in the ears to the head. Just gotta put the end deflector back on. And then the fun part of putting the snoot, snout, whatever you wanna call it, weighs like 200 pounds. We'll have to wrestle that back up on there. Ready? We got this row all put back together now. We're not gonna try running it just because we don't wanna make a mess on the shop floor. So hopefully that thing's ready to go. But the other thing we noticed, in addition to we wanna change and double check those gaps on the bottom between the spacing of the stock rolls, is the other thing that we need to do includes these deck plates here. So like I mentioned earlier, these are what make sure the ears don't slide through and get chopped up if you look at this one in particular you can see that this deck plate here is just slightly higher than this deck plate and that can cause uneven cutting so we're gonna try put basically put blocks underneath slam the head down it'll bring this up there's a couple like this row is pretty close but there's a couple spots on the corn head that we're gonna have to do that on this one's really bad show you here I got this two by four show you it's nice and level across so that's the first one we got done but dad's about to head out for the day so now I'm gonna go get some of the AMS stuff done inside the cab show you guys what we all need to do up there on the displays here what I need to do is delete out all of our last year's harvesting maps which would be all of our guidance lines we used as well as all of the planting maps from last year's fields so any soybean field we had last year which is now corn. We need to delete out all that stuff so it doesn't get pulled up when we start combining. So if I can remember, I think it's here. We'll delete all this information out. That way it won't show up when we start combining. Now the only way ooh, to get the new stuff that we need inside the display in there is, well, I guess I could go through the phone and do it, but it's almost easier just to go up to the computer. 
So I'm gonna run up to the office, we'll get the data we need, and then we'll start uploading it. I don't know, we might do USB or we might use, try using the Wi-Fi here in the shop. We'll see how much data it actually ends up being. Looks like somebody left us a note here. So here is our John Deere Operations Center account, and it has all of our equipment, all of our fields, and what we're gonna do inside here is we're gonna create basically a data file that's gonna say, hey, Home North Field was planted July 4th of 07 XF4 soybeans. It's gonna have that information in there. It's gonna show it on a map. But what I'm gonna do is combine all the fields, combine all the planting dates, and send that to the combine. I got the file made for the S770 combine. I'll get that sent off to it now. And then the combine should have everything we need for this fall. But while I'm already at the computer, you know, I was also thinking, I need to send all those guidance lines to the four wheel drive as well. So we're gonna go in, create that file. All the lines are being sent through the interweb to the machines that we need. And if you think that's a waste of time, let me tell you how much time that actually saves us in the fall. Because instead of pulling into a field, punching it on the display, like what angle of the field we want to work at, what hybrid. Basically, I just did all that in the office in about a half hour. And now all of our machines should be ready to go with all the guidance lines they need for this fall, which obviously we need hired help in the fall. So it's really nice for those guys that help us in the fall because then they just literally drive into a field and it snaps on which guidance line they need to be in, how deep the implement's gonna work. And they don't have to have any problems because they're not running the equipment all the time. But I do need to delete all the data off of our 9620 because it still has a bunch of data on it from this spring. It has been too long, my dear friend. We need to get the battery started. Now we need to come in here and delete out all the information. To delete out all the information from this spring, it's basically the same as it was in the combine. We'll click our name and we will hit delete. That'll delete all of our farms, all of our tracks, and we will delete it. Once this tractor now gets hooked back up to the internet, which basically once we get it brought back outside, all those guidance lines we made back in the office will get brought into this thing. The only other piece of equipment that we need to get ready from the inside of this shed is really just the grain cart. But we don't need the grain cart out today because we still have the combine and corn head hooked up in the other shed. So that's gonna have to happen a different day. But if you felt like you learned something in today's video, if you enjoyed today's content, please give this video a thumbs up down below. And with that, that's all I got for today's video of High Tech Farmer. Thanks so much everybody for watching. We'll see you in the next one.